This ain't no joke, this ain't no game. This that CSC game. They said pull up, so I came. You better put some respect on their name. Yeah, 55 was goody. Kill the vibe, how could he? Big card on the hoodie. Let me break it down for you fully. This is your average broadcast. This ain't just no podcast. The mother show spread fake news. We just call them broadcast. West Joey, Sam, Sean, Dalton. Ain't none of that boy Higgy. He said he don't want no small fries. Tell them they better make them biggie. Yeah, you already know what we be on. We got the crown. We hold the door, we throw the mails and you take them home When they ring the bells, you know that it's home The bar set, we set in the tone If we set it, and set it in stone Sit in the seat, set up your phone You in the car, no sports zone Go. Welcome, everybody. Uh, coming to you live from the Cardinal Sports Zone crew studios. This is the Cardinal Sports Zone podcast. And here tonight, we're going to have a very special episode. Uh, it's just the guys going to be hanging out, shooting the bull, talking that talk. Uh, welcome, everybody that's in here on all the avenues. Again, we do have uh, we do have support on Twitter now. So you can comment on Twitter. We get them through. Uh, that's been big the last couple weeks. Jason Baker, Brandon Lucas, welcome to the show. Everybody else that's joining in, we'll shout you out when you hop on. Uh, tonight's show is it, it's got a simple concept. We're going to talk about the uh, we're going to pre- preview Louisville's big bowl game next week, Wednesday night versus the Trojans of USC. And w- when you want to get people in here to preview, you don't want some everyday hacks like me and my brother. You want some real, uh, you want real experts. And I thought, who knows? Do I know any coaches? Oh, yeah, I know a coach. I know plenty of coaches, but I know a coach that can speak on this. And do I know any fathers? Oh, oh yeah, I know I know a, a, a past father, uh, a present father, and uh, we're going we're gonna to get it popping, and we're going to get this going tonight. So we appreciate everybody joining in. Uh, and at this moment, I got a support text. Uh, Master Yoda in the building, appreciate you. Let's go ahead and try to get this off my screen because it's distracting me. But uh, – I'm here with my co-host, one and only co-host for the night, my little brother, Joe Wyman. What's going on, everybody? Uh, and here's who we're going to have on the show. And I'm going to introduce my first guest first because he's not one of the card dads, but he is a card coach. And uh, it's my guy. Here, here's a little bit about him. 38 and 14 here at Louisville, including a 12 and 1 record. Um, he was 2 and 2 in bowls. He's one of many assistant coaches that used to play for the Ville and is now helping then become elite at Christian Academy of Louisville. You need proof? Well, he's now back-to-back state championship coach, uh, Tobridge. At the end of the day, it's my guy, Keith Tobridge. Keith, what's good? Uh, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing, man? Look, got the video going, man. Yeah, yeah. Time. Yeah, I had listened. So come to find out, my phone works. So I'm in good shape now. So I'm in good. I'm good. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Look, Master Yoda in the building. Wes Keys in the building. Chris, Steve, we appreciate everybody joining in. Daniel Spencer. Donna Hoover, uh, appreciate everybody joining in. Uh, really quick, before we bring the card dads on, I want to uh, get through our little business and then we'll get started. Uh, don't forget the Fitness Market chat line is open. If you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or however, send us your questions. It'll pop up on the little chat line, and uh, and we'll, we'll answer them as they come up. Master Yoda is out to sea, and his internet is bad. Yoda, out to sea? Man, don't you know, don't you know this is the card? Okay. Support us where at where so are you he, at? So he's a C man. So, oh gosh. Yes, he's he's a he's at C man right now. Um if there were more than one of him. Okay, yes, Joey. Yes, yes, yes. There would Look, be men. Check on the graphic below me and Keith and Joey to see how you can uh follow Cardinal Sports Zone Podcast on social media and to help support us monetarily if you wish to. Hit that thumbs up button while you're here on YouTube. Uh make sure you are watching it on YouTube if you can. It'll help us out a lot more, but we we don't discriminate. We'll welcome you on any platform. Um, our holiday schedule is as such. We got the live show tonight, and we are recording uh, sometime this week a special award show, end of the year award show that will air sometime. We haven't decided when it's going to air, but we're going to take a week off. We're going to air. We're going to do the show, uh, do the pre-tape, take a week off, and come back hopefully with some different results on the hardwood and be able to, you know, have some positivity going on there. Uh, but let's get it. You know, we got a very special edition of the podcast tonight. Look, the athletes get a lot of the shine. 
But today we're going to focus on the men of Louisville football that have made an impact not only on the youth, but their own son, uh, their own sons as well. It's the Cardinal dads. First up, I'm going to bring in my guy. He has been a very patient card dad this year. His son uh, got hurt right at the beginning of the year. I believe it was before the season, actually. Uh, but he was here at every game supporting the Cardinals, supporting his son. It's my guy, RG, Ryan Griffin. Ryan, what's good? What's up, fellas? Thanks for having me tonight. Hey, man, right. thanks for coming on. We appreciate you. And last but – look, I had to bring him on last because he's kind of a diva sometimes. I'm messing with you. It's a, it is quarterback guru extraordinaire. I hope that introduction is as good for him as it was for me. It's our guy, Coach. Fitzpatrick. Coach Fitz, what's good? What's happening, fellas? What's going down? Was that a good <laughs> intro? Did I get that? Did... Yeah, it, well, you got it wrong because you said quarterback. You know, I'm a, I'm a wide receiver. I meant wide receiver. Look, I've got quarterback <laughs> on the brain, I was, man. Hey, I, I was about to say, man, this, this man right here is the GOAT. <laughs> we know, look, what's I'm happening, called, Keith? What's I did up? get that wrong, but look, I Ryan. have been so traumatized <laughs> by quarterback play this year. Quarterback was what was on my head. Right, uh, right, right. I get it. I so, totally get it. Look, it, I was going to say wide receiver, but well, yeah, but that's true. But you don't have to produce right, direct. I bring everybody sit here on. look pretty and uh, be right, funny. right. Yeah, you just got to sit there, be pretty, and look fun. Yeah, I messed up. Thanks, John. John Lindeman. I I got I messed up. Thank you. Uh, no uh, worries. For sure, for sure. Yoda. Okay. Just want to make yeah, sure that. Thanks for having I, me, guys. I appreciate it. No man, thanks for coming on. We we uh we we value your expertise, and uh, we're gonna ask a couple questions. We're not gonna keep y'all on here long. It's Friday night. No, it's, it's time to good. relax. It's time to party. So we appreciate you all. Uh, we we, we appreciate you all joining in. Uh, here's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna let the 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 fans ask questions like we always do. Y'all light it up like normal. We appreciate it. We're gonna let Coach Fitz kind of preview little. Uh, you know, give us give us his thoughts. Maybe not preview, but give us thoughts on Louisville's offense. We'll have Ryan give his thoughts on the defense, and Chief Keith is just back-to-back -back state championship assistant coach. Keith Cobridge is just going to chime in wherever he wants to because that's how I let him do because he just won back-to-back -back state championship. So it, it is what it is. Uh, I want to. I want to what would happen if I won a third. Uh, Can I get out? Of here? Oh, <laughs> here's the, here's the thing. I just was talking about this with my brother. You win three straight. You're the new co-host. He's out of here. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I'll be pulling for you. <laughs> I'll be at every game next year. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to have a good time tonight, though. Uh, RG says, Coach Fitz, what's up? Everybody's – look, y'all show y'all's love, and then we'll get started. That's how we like to do it anyway. Dwayne says, hello. What's up, Dwayne, Daniel? All right. So, here's what we're going to do. Again, we're going to let we're gonna let Keith just do whatever he wants to. Uh, it's his night. We're going to do this, like, the day after they won the state championship, but things happened in his schedule and mine. We couldn't do it. So, we're going to celebrate him tonight as well. Is talk about the bowl game, but keys to the game, strengths, weaknesses, everything else. Um, very blanket statement to start this off. We really don't know who all and who will not play for USC in the Holiday Bowl, but we do know a ton of their players have opted out, jumped in the transfer portal. Yeah, Caleb Williams. Um, I think they're going to be down to their eighth string quarterback. I'm not really sure, but as of now, for us, the only – I had this confirmed earlier, the only two to opt out for us – and I say the only two, like they weren't no big deal. But it's a uh, star running back, Jordan, uh, Jawar Jordan, and star wide receiver, Jamari Thrash. So we're still deep in both positions, though. We are. We are still deep, and yes, we still do have very. a little bit of quality in both positions, too. I, yes. I think I think the running back, uh, I think the running back room's a little deep. And I do, now that I say that, I do believe I saw earlier that Garendo may or may not play. You all can verify that for me. And uh, and let me know in the chat. I've line. only seen Thrash and you've only Jordan, seen okay. But well, and I did we send still got Mo Turner back there. So Mo Turner, Mo problems, and and Coach Fitz bounced out. Maybe this video went out. Um, we kind of need him back because we're gonna go offense first. Oh, okay, he is. So we got okay. Yep, so, yep. Look, when when you're when you're producing, running, hosting, and anything goes wrong, you freak out a little bit. So what we're gonna do first, uh, Coach is. Uh, what do you think Louisville's keys to victory are for offense? Actually, protecting the football. You know, uh, you know, I'm pretty active on Twitter, so <laughs> you know, I see the fans, man. And <laughs> the, the the more you see on Twitter, the more sometimes you start 
you know, looking at the fans like they're insane, but you got to understand the Twitter fans aren't the majority of the fans. So you have to keep it in perspective, whether you're a coach or whether you're a parent, but if Louisville protects the ball, because I know their quarterback has gotten a little bit of flat, but that, that kid's a good – he's a solid quarterback, man. If they protect mm-hmm. the ball, yep, and the defense plays well, right, to keep them out of, you know, short fields and things like that, then I think the offense will play really well, man. I, when I watch Brown's play, play calling, it's very intentional, right? Mm-hmm. It's very intentional. I've seen, you know, uh, mm-hmm. coaches – at Louisville who weren't intentional in their play calling. You couldn't, you could sit in the stands and can't really figure out rhyme or reason for some of the play calls. But when you watch Brom call plays, you know that it's very intentional, man. And that offense is really, really good. It's, it's really, really diverse. And I think that even with Jamari and uh, the running back being gone, I think they're pretty deep. I know they're deep at wide receiver. That's one thing mm-hmm. I do know. And I know they do like their young wide receivers. I can tell you that firsthand. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I expect to, I expect the offense to play really well as long as the defense shows up like it has been. And, and yeah, great points. And obviously, if, if we're going to talk about wide receivers, we would go to the wide receiver guru, not the quarterback guru. Whoever said that was just on something, I think. Idiot. 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 But uh but no, you're right. He's very he looks like he's very methodical, very surgical with his play calling. Like he's got some we have some people that, that like to that have even with all the success we had last year, uh <clears throat> would say that maybe we played for field goals too much. But he had when we did end up doing kicking the field goal, it was because we were trying to run eight minutes off the clock and, right. and put ourselves in position to win the game. And yeah, that happened. Uh, that happened a lot of times, and it kind of fell on, you know, it, is it that Brom didn't trust the quarterback or he was just doing, in your opinion, do you think it was because he didn't fully trust? Because the quarterback, not very accurate. Uh, he was shaken very easily, but he did, I like to vouch for him all year and say he's a game manager. He did what he had to do uh, to get his points and get us 10 you know, to, to get us right there where we needed to be at the end of the season. You know, we – Fell to Kentucky, ugh, fell to Florida State, but and fell to Pittsburgh. But a ten win regular season is nothing to to scoff about. So what would you think in your opinion? I'm I'm not really trying to ask you to get yourself in trouble or not get yourself in trouble, but do you think it was just because he didn't have maybe he didn't have as much confidence in the kid, or was it just like let's just run the clock out because we're trying to win this ball game and I've got a specific pattern in my head on how to do that? It, well, for me, when I watch some of those games, man, I think that, you know, he tries to make sure that that kid doesn't get himself in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, un, until you had that guy at quarterback, right? You know, I think he was a stopgap for them bringing in and uh, maturing the quarterback up under him. And I think, what is he, a six-year senior, fifth-year senior? I know uh, he was a fifth or six-year senior, yeah. right? He's, he's 42 now. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> Come on, man. My kid might be in school two more years. <laughs> Plumber no, looks yeah. old. Plumber looks old. <laughs> right, 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 with, with the mustache. But I, I think that a lot of times, man, unless you got that playmaker back there, you know, like that dude that you know can take off, run with the football, uh, first and foremost is going to protect the football, not make a dumb mistake, always, you know, aware of situational football, then you kind of reel him in a little bit, and then you – pretty much, I, I like to call it video game uh, play calling, where you're trying to move every piece on the board and make sure, you know, your playbook is creating points opposed to your players, right? Because you guys have been here where Louisville has had just playmakers. Devontae, Devontae Parker, you throw the ball up in the air, you know, he's going to come down with it nine times out of ten, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't have that big guy at wide receiver where you throw the ball, you know, that he's either going to be a touchdown, incomplete, or pass interference, right? And, and some of those things, when you see a coach calling plays and not trusting a guy, it comes from him not being that guy. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I yeah, just yeah, don't yeah, think they sure. have that guy at the QB spot right now. Well, and I'm hoping, hoping the guy that we're bringing in uh, – I've not seen a whole bunch of film on him yet. Uh, I know he doesn't have a lot of film because he's been hurt like 157 times in his, his another seven, six, seventh year guy as well. And yeah, Tyler, 43 this year. Tyler, Shuck, everybody's just 43. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Tyler Shuck is how you pronounce it from Texas Tech. 
he looks like he – so the things that I didn't see in Plummer – I know we're supposed to be talking about the bowl game, but obviously we're going to go off the rails and talk about whatever we want to talk about tonight. But the only the only deficiencies I saw in Plummer were the fact that he – he missed on throws probably three out of every six throws. He either over, under, or misplaced his throws. He couldn't lead a receiver very well at all. Uh, this guy looks like he can do all those. Th- he he can. This guy can definitely lead the receiver, but he looks like he's a little bit more accurate. So I'm, I'm very very excited for next season. I mean, we still got this season to finish up. Uh, my favorite defensive player will be back in the backfield next year. So uh, you know who I'm talking about, Ryan. Uh, but oh, yeah. look, th- I- I'm very excited with, with the trajectory that Louisville football is on now. And, uh, it, it I want to be excited. I want to be excited. Did you say undefeated, undefeated next year? National champions. Okay. All right. Well, it, of course, Joey's the one that says all the ludicrous things. And if he's right, right, he's right. If he's not, then go bigger, go it is what it is for sure. Um, Keith, I'm going to ask you this: What can Louisville not do on offense if they want to if they want to beat a, a team like USC? <laughs> uh, you got to limit the big play. You kind of got to USC is, is built off big plays, um, especially on the defense side of the ball. We got to limit that. If Caleb Williams is back there, he's a big playmaker type of guy. He has some studs around him. Um, so I'll probably expect to see from the defensive side of the ball playing a lot of quarters coverage, keeping everything in front of you. Letting the deep, let, letting the front four wreak havoc, and let them get after the quarterback, and and hopefully that you know we can catch them slipping and catch them catch them missing on some of their mistakes. Um, I think Fitz hit it right on the head as far as offensive side of the ball. We got to take care of the football. That's the most important piece of, of the game, regardless of the fact, right? It's taking care of that football, whether it's from the you know receivers catching the ball, tucking and running, whether it's the running backs, you know, securing the handoff. Um, the quarterback, you know, uh, taking care of the, taking care of the football, make sure we don't have stupid penalties, etc. Like the things that basically, if you think all the things that lost us the game is against, against UK, we can't have that in bowl game. That's that's kind of how I put how I put it. We did everything we did everything that we weren't supposed to do <laughs> to lose that UK game. So if we can limit all of that mess and go out there and, and play football like we've know we can. If we're gonna ten win season, we know we can play football. Um, I think we'd be in good shape as far as, you know, being being USC uh, for the most part, too. So, yeah, we got to limit the pre snap penalties, you know. Yeah, like things, just stupid things stuff. that you shouldn't be doing, you know, this far into the season. That's that's week one, week two kind of things. And uh, just be disciplined on, on both sides of the ball on, the, on that in the look, trenches. Look, look, will beat themselves both games. Mm-hmm. I yes. watched both of those games. Yeah, that, there's no reason under the sun that team shouldn't have been undefeated. No yes. reason. Correct. They did not lose to better teams. No. No, and I think that's going to be a pattern going forth because one thing you can, that you can say about him is that he's very calculated. He know like the, we we had we had to have led the country this year in eight minute scoring drives, and it, it wasn't attempted drives. Like we scored on all the drives that we ran the clock out. Uh, for the most part, he's a uh, risk taker, though. Too, like, he is. He is. You know, he's oh, yeah. very calculated, but you know, he's not afraid to to take a risk, take a shot. You know, <laughs> absolutely. We want to give a shout out to to Facebook, uh, Lee, Bill Jones, one of our sponsors. We appreciate you, Bill, up, Bill, saying what's up to to Papa Fitz and and and, and Mr. Griffin and, and Keith and Albert Cross is in here. Robin's in here. Bruce is in here. Uh, Shane is in here and. Our Uncle Sam is in the building, too. And we had a couple comments that popped up on here, so we're going to go ahead. Uh, Bruce, go Cards. Ransdale family, happy Friday, everyone. I appreciate y'all's time. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn this to the defensive side for a minute, Ryan. Same question. What, in your opinion, what are the keys to victory for Louisville in this bowl game versus USC? All right, well, yo, before I answer that question, I got to pay homage, all right? Yes, y'all sir. may not know but as y'all call him Coach Fitz, you know, Dez is a few years older than MJ. Right. So we got we had like this little, you know, crew in Michigan where everybody, you know, everybody's on the same type of grind. And, you know what I'm saying? We was in the same places and we was, you know, doing our thing. And Fitz, man, was one of them cats that 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 would always offer his advice as, as to what he saw, how my son can improve. And he never was overbearing, but I was just a dude, man, that I could always go to and ask, you know few questions you know here or there or whatever so 
I mean, that's so y'all just y'all don't know. We 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 have a we have a relationship. I've been knowing this dude for a minute, Absolutely. man. Like, mad respect. Look, fit. why am I just listen? You're making the job on me harder, Ryan, because you you could have told you didn't tell me you knew him already. Man, yeah. listen, seriously, man, that's I, I, cool, man. I mean, the way the way he handled, see, his younger son was he was he was a pup. You know what I mean? MJ was coming up, but the way he was handling Dez, you sit yeah. back and you you learn the process, you watch the process, and you see who's doing it right. Nobody's perfect, but Fitz was always one of them cats to where even Dez's work ethic was different. The way Dez carried himself was different because when we would go to these camps, seven on sevens, trainings, this, that, and the other, you kind of sit back and you watch, you know, who, who's different. You know what I mean? And so a lot of the attributes that you can tell he taught his son, I put some of those in MJ just in terms of approach to camps and making sure you're getting your reps and, and being a dog out there, you know, being good physically. Mm -hmm. and you know, So Fitz was just always that dude, man. Even though I didn't go to him a bunch, I knew I could go to him. And the times that I did rap to him, he was always there for me. So I just had to, yeah. I just had to give my man his flowers. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I appreciate that, man. No yeah, and, and I watch, I, and I watch MJ grow up, man. Like just from a little dude, man. And and like you said, when when you're on that when you're on that camp circuit, and I don't care what city you're in, you can always identify the kids who are talented. But not only that. The parents who are dedicated because when people talk about that one percent to make it to the nfl that metric doesn't include uh like all the variables right that statistic doesn't include all the variables and one of the huge variables that a lot of people don't think about is parental support because there's a lot that goes into the travel and all that good stuff that you see on the surface but other than that or outside of that it's that mental aspect, helping them get through adversity so they don't quit. Cause I know my boys have been through some shit that at the end of the day, a lot of kids would quit if I wasn't in their ear, giving them perspective consistently so they, they can, you know, sustain because everybody knows sustainability is the key to plan on Sunday. Sustainability mm -hmm. is the key, especially now in the day of NIL and the transfer portal, you know, mental stability, mental toughness and just sustainability is everything when it comes to lasting and eventually getting your shot. So no, Ryan, I appreciate that, man. And I love MJ. And when he landed at the Ville, bro, you, I, I was smiling ear to ear. I was like, whoa, is that MJ, MJ? Right? I said, is that MJ, MJ? I said, oh my God, yeah, they got a good one. So yeah, I, I appreciate that, bro. No doubt, yeah, no doubt. Bottom All right, bottom bottom, man. Hey Ryan, really quick, Joey, what did you want to? Did you want to? No, add? I was just gonna say that probably the reason why they didn't say anything is because real G's moving silence. You know, that's, right. that's very fair. Look, I want to say something else too. Uh, me, me, and uh, me, and, me and Fitz have been friends probably for how long now? About 10, 10 years or so. Yeah, yeah, close to it, man. Like when Dad first uh, started being recruited there. Yeah, when yeah. Dad's committed to Nebraska, we was cool. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, when he, when he committed to Nebraska, we wasn't cool for a few days, but then when he recommitted <laughs> to Louisville, he was cool again. Yeah. But you were yeah, on this. Yeah. You were on here in season one. We didn't have the video yeah. thing going on there, but you, we always appreciate your love. We always appreciate your support. And just to kind of touch on what what Ryan just said, one of the most Y'all nailed it on the head. The biggest difference that you can see between kids on the field is, are which ones that have profession that 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 act like this is a business and not. You want them to have fun, but if they're wanting to do anything past high school, you want them to carry themselves like it's a business. And oh, yeah. I see that every day in fits, and uh, I admire you a lot, my man, and I appreciate all your I support. It, man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right, Ryan, I'll shut up. Everybody else always gets mad because I don't shut up, but that's just what I do. I talk. So, <laughs> I didn't even my bad. So the question was again. Oh yeah, the question. Right. I'll set what you up, Ryan. What are what are the defensive keys to victory for Louisville over USC? You know what? It is kind of difficult. Uh, Mentioned it earlier because we don't know who's exactly playing for um for USC. Uh, to be honest with you, one one thing that I actually love about our defense this year, I mean, we know Q's leaving. Um. Ashley's coming back. So really, it's not even so much for me, not even so much about S -E -S -C and, and who's going to be there, who's not going to be there. You have quarterbacks leaving, receivers leaving, running backs in the quarter, whatever. Really, to be honest with you, man, for me, it's it's I would like to see those cats just continue the season. You know what I mean? So whether you are uh, considering yourself still auditioning for the league 
if you are trying to send yourself into next season or into spring ball, playing a certain way, your approach. I mean, for me, honestly, everything matters. Like, like yeah. even like to the youngins, learn how to travel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you're, if you're a young guy, learn how to travel. Learn how to, you know, use your time wisely. You know, all the stuff, preparing yourself for the game, get your proper rest, all the type of stuff. So going to the game, the keys are going to be the same. I mean, you know how it is. No matter that, you know, keep everything in front of you, whether you're playing quarters coverage or whatever. Um, I, I honestly don't know how Coach English is going to be, you know, in terms of rotations and the other. But it's going to be the same thing. Pressure on the quarterback. Um, we're preparing for a different quarterback. You know what I mean? So it's like, are we trying to get this quarterback off of his spots? Are we are we pressing more? Are we going to blitz more? Are we going to, you know what I mean? So it, it's going to be a lot of inter- interchanging parts that, that we may not see based upon quarterbacks and receivers that we may not even see. If their deep threat is not in the game, I mean, is that going to change us to, 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 to be more, you know, press coverage across the board? Are we going zero? You know what I mean? So it's really difficult to, 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 expect anything other than let's go out there and let's play with a purpose you know what i mean so whether that purpose is let's win this game whether that purpose is let's be penalty free um let's let's keep them behind the chains um let's let's continue to build off we've been building on let's try something new let me see some fresh faces let me see you know who's paying attention to details so going into this bowl game is difficult because of because of our preparation or 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 lack of knowledge of what sc is going to bring so the only thing I can think of right now that would be a victory for us is if our boys go out there and still believe in the coaches, um, execute the game plan, whatever it is, play 100 miles an hour, and sometimes you have to do things for self. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, mm-hmm. like, it's like that I go out there and, and do my job. So our mindset going into the game defensively may be completely different than if this was game six or seven. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Um, I, know gotcha. we want the w. I know we want the W, but at the same time, what are some of the other things that we're really trying to carry into next season from this bowl game right here, just as a unit? Let's go back to the locker room at halftime and at the end of the game and say that we hit these specific goals because, again, y'all know. it. it do y'all know who, who's, who's, who's going to be quarterback for USC? I, I don't know who's going to be quarterback for us. I do know their big, their deep threat guy is is out. I know their starting QB. The, what's the, the Caleb, Caleb Williams? Yeah, he Caleb did. Williams is out. So I don't even know who they're going to put on the field. I don't even know if they know who they're going to put on the field yet. So it's kind of, awesome. it's kind of. Th- but we do know what they're used to doing. We do know their schemes and Blitz everything. Every down, blitz every down for sure. Keith, I, now I know your first year here. It, w- it was strong second year, right? Uh, so I came after the Sugar Bowl, so 2013. Okay, so then, yeah, right? Was the Sugar Bowl his first so year I, or his so third? No, uh, that was his third. I came his third year. He okay, left, third year. He left after that, yep. So then you didn't ha- have to experience Ron England. And I'll tell you what, I've never mm-hmm. had more of a, uh, a 180 on a coach. He was here with us during – the uh the era we don't like to speak of it it's it's the coach that shall not be named it never happened it never happened uh but i don't, I don't even want to ask yeah, yeah no 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 you don't want to <laughs> it, it rhymes with crap horse i'll just say okay. that's the head coach's name okay. coach crap horse it was kind of uh, whatever yeah, but he you. was he was the dc one of those years and didn't like anything about his not only because we we weren't success he it was off the hills, I believe, of our our Orange Bowl season, yeah. and uh, him and, and and Bob, uh, not him and Bobby, him and, and Coach, we'll call him Coach Crap, just because we don't want to uh, reveal the name. But will be nice to him. Had, had a almost fully returning team and turned a twelve and one squad into a six and six nightmare. The defense was awful. Uh, I, I I don't. Huh? Yeah, had Brian Brom came back for his senior year. Mike Bush came back for his senior year and got hurt in that first game. Um, but wasn't very very big of a fan of him then. But I have seen. Uh, first off, I knew anybody was gonna be better than Brian Brown, and I apologize him. I'm not trying to offend him as a person, but what he did here just wasn't working on any level. Uh, his play calling, I think I could have done better on. You remember Tech Mobile when we were growing up, guys? And uh, you could pick one of four plays. Well, that's what it seemed like he did 
every time. He should have had Teresa's mentality, just Hail Mary. Every yeah, just Hail, just hell Mary on defense every rip. But um, he's impressed me this year, and he's changed my mind. And I didn't think, I didn't think he would. What have you liked about the way he's he's uh, coached the defense up this year? I love the defense because I, th- I think that number one, I'm the type of guy I believe players take on the, on the personality of their coach. And one thing that I know obviously from you know having the son and playing and conversations, they 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 bought in. So it's like when you buy in, now you're talking about we see success. Now when we see we see success. Now we we can you're trusting more and you're going. So what I, what I like is that that the attitude has been even when you look at like I believe it was uh, uh, Indiana where we had that goal line stand, Ben don't break. And it's kind of the same thing with the, the, the attitude with the defense. You, it's like you may not like a few things. You may give up a few things, this, that, and the other. We just hold steady to the game plan and we keep going. And that's why you find certain guys in our defense that have success. They may not necessarily be that great, but because they, but they're in the right place at the right time. So, therefore, you, you're in the right place at the right time. Now you're trusting that guy to your left. You're trusting that guy to your right. And, and we're, 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 we're speed. So, I don't think any of our defenses was um, – was exotic. I don't. I don't think we ran anything super exotic, you know, in terms of defense. It, it was pretty. I don't want to say vanilla, but but it was pretty. We knew we knew what we were doing. I, I can sit back and I can look, and I I knew right. what, what was coming. But at the same time, we were effective, and we were effective because of our front four being so effective. We need a little bit of pressure from those linebackers. We have a cat like you that can shut down the side of the field. You know what I mean. We weren't threatened a lot deep middle all season, but I think that's because of okay, y'all know what it is. Quarterback, you get four seconds. Right. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You, you get Adam, we get Heron, or we get Des Taylor, we get somebody to knock that down to three and a half, maybe three seconds. You know what I mean? So now you're asking the back end to cover just a little bit shorter, what have you. You got a linebacker moving the side of a quarterback's lane, or what have you. So we get we, we, we I think we were good at getting quarterbacks off their spots a lot getting their vision because we really didn't get nobody really picked us apart. I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe y'all can think of a game. I'm trying to think of a game where somebody just like, just, 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 just picked us apart. We probably have moments like that, but I thought all the adjustments were good enough. Like y'all said, it isn't, it isn't a game that we should have lost. It's not. Very um, true. Very true. Good, but, um, so I, I liked English defense. I liked the way you called the defense. Um, I thought that I thought that we were, I think consistent is the good word. I think consistent is the good word because we never got, I don't want to start, but we never got too high. We never got, you know, too low. I think we were consistent, different guys stepped up. And I think it was just that whole do your job type, type, type attitude and mentality. Nobody stepping out of bounds or way off or what have you. They made mistakes. I knew they made mistakes. Watching the game, my son, you know, we 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 talking about it. But 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 I think that we were very. I think we were consistent enough to be as successful as we were, and we could have been even more successful. Uh, Keith, what about you? What what do you like about Ron English and his defensive schemes? Um, I think honestly, I'm picking back off Ryan, man. I think two things is this is another opportunity for everybody. Right. So you can look at it multiple different ways from a player and also from a coach as a player. Like this could be your last final hurrah before you head to the NFL draft or, or, or combine. Right. So this is another opportunity to put some film out there and showcase what you can do against a, a top opponent. Um, this is also an opportunity for the coaches as well to think about, well, maybe I can try new things throughout this game. Maybe this is an opponent that we haven't seen all year. Maybe we can try out a safety blitz or corner blitz or, you know what I'm saying, something like that, especially yeah. or, or offensively, um, just probably looking at maybe some trick plays or some things that he wants to integrate into next season. So this is this is nothing but momentum to lead into the spring because we all know offseason, that's a long time before you got to play. That's nine months before you play an opponent outside of it yourself and everybody else as well too. So I think, um, I think honestly, the defense reminds me of – when I played 2013, 2014 season is you got a front four that that's freaking wreaking havoc and it's making your job, making the DBs and linebackers job extremely easy. Yes, 2013, we had Lorenzo Malden, we had Marcus Smith, Sheldon Rankins, D'Lo in that front four. And then 2014, Pro. we had Devontae Fields, James Hearns, 
you know, we had a whole bunch of guys in that D line, which made Josh Harvey Clemens' job easy, which made uh, um, uh, Hot Rod's job easier, which made Keith Kelsey. You feel what I'm saying? So it kind of yeah. reminds me of just wreaking havoc, playing man to man coverage, letting the front four do what they do best, wreaking havoc, um, and calling it a day. So hopefully, this leads this game leads us to next year having a good a good run at it, and I'm I'm, I'm with everybody else. Hopefully, we can probably go undefeated. <laughs> Well, the, the good yeah. thing is, is like everybody's kind of touched on this is this bowl game is definitely going to be a stepping stone, a setup stone for next season, uh, which, which leads me to my last question for you all. And first off, I want to say again, thank you all for joining us. It's Friday night. We know there's things you can be doing with your family and we appreciate you spending time with your card family. I didn't even know we was having like a, a, a mini family reunion on here tonight, but I'm glad to have had it. That's for sure. And shout out to our guys from the Collision Course crew. Bill Jones is in here. Uh, Uncle Larry, he goes to all of the tailgates. He's in here. Our guy Higgy's in the building. Uh, ben Hemp in here watching as well. We've had a couple of comments. John Lindeman says he can't wait to see 26 on the field next year. Uh, and Dakota Morgan says can't wait to see what's in store for football. And our guy Chris Curry uh, hey, fellas, do we get Gus Johnson on the call Wednesday night? I hope so. There's nothing more exciting than watching a Gus Johnson call football game for me. But we'll go with – we'll go with, know how to pronounce the names. He will know how to pronounce the names, that's for sure. Uh, Fitz, we're going to go with you first. Yep, yep. What is the score going to be for the game? Oh, I say – I say 30, 34-27 Louisville. Okay. Yeah, I say yeah. I say thirty-four uh, twenty-seven Louisville, and the reason I say that is because of the defense. I really do. Yeah, and, and I just want to chime in a little bit about that defense because sure. Uh, for sure, for yeah, sure. yeah, because yeah, because Keith said something very interesting. He went back to those guys in two thousand fourteen, fifteen, and and thirteen, fourteen, and I remember you know going through the recruiting process. You get a chance to see a lot of teams practice, right? A lot of colleges practice. And it becomes super evident who the good teams are opposed to the bad teams. Even mm -hmm. when you go to games and you see pregame, you know, you see a pregame with a team who's doing really, really well that season opposed to next week going and visiting another team that's not doing well. And you remember like, wow, yeah, you can just tell the difference in pregame, right? It's not necessarily size or ability. You can just tell the difference. And the first thing I noticed uh, back in 2000. 15, I, no, 16, I remember asking Dez when he first got to Louisville. I said, dude, are you guys really that good? I said, you know what you're looking at. You're not, you're not playing, bro. I said, but are you guys really that good, man? I said, you guys seem to have a good team. He said, that this team is good. He said, the defense got some dogs on it. He said, it's dudes on this defense that are dogs. And I remember asking Dez in the middle of this season, I texted him and I said, Dez, Louisville's defense, bro. I don't know if I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing, but they fly around, right? I'm not dissecting the coverages or the fronts or anything like that. You know, just the eyeball test. Turn on TV, you see them competing, and you go, damn, these dudes fly around, and they will hit you. These guys are trying to finish. And he well, texted me back. He was like, yeah. And he texted me back. He said that. Them dudes fly into the football. They can play. So... That's why I think this, it's going to be 34-27. I, I don't think Coach Brown is going to lay down. I think he's trying to win. I think he's trying to finish, you know, mm -hmm. from people I've talked to who, you know, played for him at Purdue. You know, we know a couple of kids, Ryan, you know, you know a couple of kids who played for him at Purdue, you know, like Deion Burks, you know, Abdur, those kids. You know, I talk to their parents, and, you know, they say the same thing. Like, that dude's going to finish. Like, he's going into this game with intentions, bro. And I think we're going to win 34-27. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go with uh, let's go with uh, Griff. What, what about you? What, what what you got? I'm gonna go with 27 to 17. And the reason why I go with 27 to 17, I would go higher than that. It would put it in the 30s. But the only reason I'm not is because I'm. Is Garendo playing? I believe mm -hmm. so, but I'm not yeah, certain. I think he's playing. Okay. He should. At least. I believe if, so. If, if we have the home run hitter <clears throat> coming out of the backfield, then I think that we will hit the 30s. The home run mm -hmm. here coming out the backfield. We still got Huggins, Bruce, that can stretch the field. Bell, some big guy. We got some guy we can still get in the end zone. But the reason why I don't even think this game is close is because the difference right now with Louisville and USC is we're a team still. Mm -hmm. 
We're an intact yeah. team. And Great we're point. only not having Thrash and Jawar. But other than that, we're intact. USC is all over the place right now. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be trying to fill holes, fill holes, fill holes, trying to make, make it work. Their adjustment making is going to be completely different because the conversation is going to be from a coach to a player that hasn't been doing it all year. With us, okay. our coaches and the players' conversation are going to be the same coaches have the same conversations with the players. So if we had that home run hitter, I'd go with the 30s. So I'm going to go 27-17 cards. I, I like it. And look, like you said, with Grindo, Grindo, what a pleasant surprise this year to be able to have a second – Power because at the beginning of the year, we thought he was thunder, we thought Jordan was lightning. But Grindo come in and he was both, he was a whole storm, he was the thunder, the lightning, the rain, uh, all of it together. And then to have a guy like Mo Turner behind him, and then the freshman, I, and I, I believe uh, K Brown is that his name? I think so. K Brown, like just just a phenomenal friend. I hope they all, they all stick around. I know Grindo can, but I, from what I've heard from people in his camp. He's not gonna. Play. He's gonna go ahead and try to strike while the iron's hot, and you gotta do that. Uh, whatever's in your best interest, you know, we're never gonna judge you for that. Not the Trueville fans, anyway. And uh, really quick, fifth man, when when we found out that Des was gonna be a Steeler, me and my brother were so excited, and uh, we really hope that we we get to see that that uh, that hey, six stay, Patrick. Stay, stay, stay tuned next year, man. They 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 got a long term plan for him. Good. Stay tuned. Yeah. We we need a plan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, yeah, I, I'm not. I, I can't we, comment on that. Hey, we, we, we have a whole <laughs> I, I don't want to cost them a paycheck, but yeah, we could have a whole 60 minute conversation about that mess up there. Right, right. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. And uh, look, we're I looking know for, about that. I know more about that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and we're looking forward to seeing, uh, as I coined him in college, Des Six Patrick go from college and to the pros and, and had the same kind of effect. Uh, I think everybody here in the build knows that Dez's numbers should have been double what they were if it wasn't for a certain pair yeah. of handcuffs on them. But we won't talk about that either because I don't want to get nobody in trouble either. But uh, Brown last... should have came a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever meet him, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> I'm going to keep my mouth late. shut. I ain't trying to get in trouble. Uh, Keith, <laughs> your prediction. And then we'll go to uh, you all here in the chat line. Give us your predictions. We'll read them out loud, and then we'll close up the show. Keith, what's up with the uh, – what you got? I think um, – back. I'm sorry, back-to-back -back state championship, Keith Trobridge. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I think 31-14. Uh, the reason, reason why I said it is because you can't prepare for every situation, right? You can't prepare for a backup quarterback. He's probably never played it all year, right? So, of course, right. he's probably going to have his, his splashes. So, I'm giving him seven. Um, but then also, I feel like our defense is going to get a turnover um at, at some point so i think offensively on our end is our defense are going to get stops offensively we have to make sure we counter back on those stops if we get a stop on, on, on defense make sure we get down there and go at least go get points on the board uh, but i think once you fill them out after the first quarter first i gonna say first 12 first seven minutes of the game i think we're going to get comfortable and it's going to get ugly um so i, I think 31 14 two touchdown win and uh okay. It's gonna be a good game. I think it'll be a good one all the way up until maybe like third quarter once you kind of fill them on. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be ball game after the after the, after the first half. Well, I absolutely by looking at the look on my face, I absolutely was not gonna guess thirty one fourteen. So I'm gonna guess something else. Joey, what do you got? Uh, I'll go thirty to seventeen. Um, three touchdowns, three field goals. Uh, okay. I think they'll like uh, like you said. You know, a new quarterback in there, one that hadn't got as much playing time. It just seems like a lot of the, a lot of those times they do come in and make a couple splash plays because there's really not a lot of film on them. Can't really game plan them a whole lot. So, and then piggybacking off uh, legend in the making coach, uh, two time uh, back, back, back to back, get it right. Um, I'm gonna start calling them back to back, back to back, <laughs> back to back. Keith over here, B2BK, yeah. that's his name. B2BK. I, I think right, the, right. I think the defense will come up with a turnover. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, we're, we're, we'll, we'll make adjustments at, adjustments at halftime, like coach Brown always does. And then yeah. it'll pretty much, it'll pretty much be a wrap from there. And then, and then we go into next year 
and I don't know how many games you would, you'll play in a 12 game playoff system, but if it's 15, then we're 15 and 0 next year. Ooh, in the national championship. 12, 13, 14, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about that. I'm, I'm, I'm scared at the fact NFL already has a lot of games, but you adding a grind to college four. football plus yeah, four extra games, like that's yeah. brutal, man. That's, that's brutal. That's It'll get them prepared a little bit more for the league, though. Yeah. I, I, no reason why I said it is because in the league you get four months off to do whatever yeah, you, you want to do. You don't really practice once May comes around. It's True. OTAs. You practice in just helmets. That's nothing. These kids are they got spring ball. They got summer True. camp. Like it's a grind. Like well, I, that's, okay. that's, that's, winter conditioning. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe you know when we go, when we have to play those fifteen games and win the national championship, coach will you know <laughs> kind of relax that a little bit. Give them a little bit of a break. Yeah, yeah. 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 Look, that's one thing, Joey, you, you hit the nail on the head, too. Coach Brown's been fantastic at making adjustments at half. That's something else we haven't had in the past. Our guy, John Lindemann, says 35-21 cards. Uh, he also says if IG plays, that's a huge difference maker. Our guy, Robert Holt, guys, greetings. I look at this game as the first practice for next year. Really looking forward to seeing some new faces play. Game score, cards 37, USC 21. Uh, John Lineman says what we were all thinking but didn't want to say. Des was way you underutilized. We knew that. Uh, Lee Newton says Louisville wins 21 to 7. Uh, our guy C Miles on Twitter says 35 to 10. Brom's going to hurt some feelings. Yeah, I think he's going to try to. Yeah, he's going to try to finish. He's going to try to go as high as he can. There, there's no uh, taking the foot off the gas this game. If we win 35 to 10, we will start out in the top 12 next year preseason. That's just. Like, there's no other way around it. Um, Chris Curry, our, our friend of the program, hard to get numbers rushing in on third and 15. No names mentioned. Stop it. We don't talk about that no more. Uh, we just did. Uh, Dwayne says 28-17 Louisville. All respectable scores. Our guy, Babu, says 38-10 to Ville. We will play multiple quarterbacks. Man, that game, again, who was it against? Murray at the beginning of the year, we played nine quarterbacks. That was insane. Was it 10? Yeah. It was something along those lines. Set an uh, NCAA record. Peggy says, hopefully he will use more than one quarterback. Fabian says 28 to 14. My, my official prediction is 31 to 17. Uh, I had 31 to 14, but I don't like to uh, copy off nobody else. So I'm going to go 31. Yeah, 31 to, they, they come back and hit a field goal. I wasn't thinking about the first time, but when I did the, the way my bank account set up, I, I put my savings into the check, and then I figured out the other field goal. And uh, it's 3117. Our guy Brian Davis, uh, supporter of both this podcast and our wrestling podcast that we do. We appreciate you, Brian. 35 to nothing cards. Look, <laughs> like them. Listen, as insane as that sounds, absolutely could happen. What if USC's don't have their first or their second string players and our guys just run? I mean, I can see Brian stepping, putting the foot down, blitz every down, putting the pedal hey, to the. Joey wants to blitz every down, I, and I can see I can see thirty five to zero is, is, and I'm more I'm more confident with thirty five to zero than I am twenty eight to fourteen. Uh, I wonder if uh, Sam Hartman transferred to USC for the bowl game. <laughs> well, if if he did, then yeah, we'll, we'll be in good shape. Thirty five to nothing's like guaranteed. Then that'd be his third or fourth school. <laughs> We won't be playing for field goals. Is look, no, you're right, John. That's one thing I found fascinating is that Sam Hartman went from Wake Forest. He came in with the 10th ranked team, got dusted. He transferred to Notre Dame, came in with the 10th ranked team, got Seth. dusted. And now uh, Duke's quarterbacks transferred to Notre Dame, and we're going to go up there next year and uh, dust them. Let's go ahead and take care of them too. We could be trans. We could be transfer quarterback killer. You. That's that's not. I mean, not quite as catchy as. Uh, uh, B B B two K two K over here, but you know, it, it, uh, B two B K. That's what. It, whatever. Uh, Brom squad is on fire. Says Peggy. Corey on uh, from Facebook. Uh, Corey from Twitter says thirty five to twenty four, and we'll keep taking y'all scores throughout the rest of the show. But I'm gonna go ahead and let uh, my guys go here. Uh, I'm gonna let Fitz and, and, and Griff go here. We're keep we're gonna keep you on for a few minutes so we can talk about. Uh, the state championship game and stuff, but we thank you all so much for joining us. Yeah. And I love when y'all come on. Again. You are the, listen, yes, you are the most professional guest that I've ever had on the show. And I uh, welcome y'all back. Anytime you want to get on here and talk, you just let me know. You got an open, open invite. Be careful what you wish for. Hey, hey, look. 
I love people that can actually. The worst thing is having an athlete on here that's like, so uh, athlete X or Coach X, how's it going? Um, well, you know, it's um, you know, and um, you know. <laughs> I think we should play. Uh, well, what's your so so? How do you see the the game going? Yeah, yeah uh, good. Uh, Sound like Shaq. Good. <laughs> um, good. Okay. Well, thanks for the extensive We're analysis like there. Uh, but again, yeah, Vince, Brian, appreciate you all. Thanks for hopping on here, and we'll see y'all soon. Holidays, guys. Absolutely. Happy holidays, fellas. Zoom. Merry Christmas. Happy yeah. Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy anything Merry you Christmas. anything you celebrate. Merry happy Christmas all that. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Word up. <laughs> We appreciate it. Good night, y'all. guys. Good night. All right. All right yeah. It's our guys, Coach Fitz, Ryan Griffin. Appreciate y'all. All right. That man, Fitz is, man, I love Fitz. He, uh, me and I actually used to, Fitz is from Michigan. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. And I used right. to actually take Fitz home with me every time we had a break. He used to ride in the car with me um, back to Toledo. His, his mom and dad used to pick him up. <laughs> in Toledo to take him back home. And it's, it, it's me and Fitz go way back. That's my, that's my guy right there. I did it on part. Y'all, th y'all think I accidentally yeah. brought three people together that knew each other. No, <laughs> that, that, that was, that was, that was, um, accidental. Yep. uh, but, but good. But that's, that just goes to show you all former Cardinals are family. Current Cardinals are family. It is what yep. it is. We're all intertwined, uh, somehow Joey. I mean, you're the brother of a former Cardinal, so that that's how you're tied into this whole situation. Yeah, what was that one guy? Uh, what was his name up there? Kept trying to get me to. Oh, uh, Coswell Sims, our guy Coswell Sims he was, was. He was my unofficial recruiter. Yeah, he he was like, man, you're you're a bit. What grade are you in? Eighth. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't that young. No, you, you were a little bit older, but still. <laughs> uh, I like going out and partying and hanging out with women. Much to go play football. The, I, looking back, I wish I had. I, I wish you had it too, because listen, uh, Keith, Joe, be back I'm then, tired, I was a senior at DOS. He was a freshman at DOS, and we had a six game season. And mm -hmm. he had played defensive line. He had 12 sacks in six games, including four against Trinity. Okay. And just decided he'd rather just hang out and party than to play football. They didn't, they didn't teach me plays, Keith. They just said, see ball, see get ball. All hit football. <laughs> <laughs> I feel his you. credit that's what he did yeah. that's that's exactly what i, I sacked the quarterback and the center on a uh, goal line stand one time against air coys hey listen that, listen that is okay that is perfectly fine see ball get ball that's yeah. all you need to know hey. <laughs> sometimes that's the best that's the best recipe to success don't do this you know don't, don't worry about this stunt or this whatever <laughs> blah, blah. no snap see the ball hit the ball mm -hmm. I, look <laughs> we're here we we kept uh B2BK here on the, on the line with us so we can chat with them a little bit. Special thing going on there at Christian Academy. Uh, yeah. You got Jason Hilliards there. You've got Hunter Cantwell. You've got Chris Redman. Uh, is Touche on the staff there too? Touche's there. Doug Beaumont. Doug Beaumont. Look, funny story about Touche. So I, it, I can't remember. I think it was my freshman year. We were all, me, Ivan, Chris were sitting in the, uh, the cafeteria and this guy comes in. He was new. He came in a little bit late. We had been there for about three, four weeks during – was it spring ball? I know we all enrolled early, so I think it was spring ball. And we're sitting there in the cafeteria, and this guy walks in, and we're like, hey, man, what's up? Not much. What's your name? He's like – or what's your name? Touche. Oh, but what's your first name? Touche. Touche. <laughs> your name's Touche Touche? Yeah. And for the longest time on Facebook, his name said Touche Touche. It wasn't until a couple of weeks ago, and this is how – he played there a long time ago, and it wasn't until two weeks ago. I was looking at, I was doing some research because I'm a research guy, and uh, I was trying to see how many guys on on the coaching staff was from Louisville, and I saw Touche, and I was like, "Holy crap, he does have a first name, and it's not Touche." Uh, Listen, what is it? It's. Uh, let me. I got. I'm on my phone. I can't check. I I think I have it in my phone. Listen, so that well, is it's not like Robert or anything like no. that. <laughs> That is a running joke for our Cal staff <laughs> when we're like in our coaches meeting. Like we give him so many jokes because we're like, dude, we've been knowing you for so long and don't know your first name. What is your first name? <laughs> it's Anthony. Anthony Touche. Anthony. Yes, it's Anthony Touche. It was like Kramer off of Seinfeld. Nobody ever knew his name. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up being Cosmo. 
I think y'all should start calling him Cosmo. I am going to start calling him Cosmo. Cosmo Touche. But, dude, one of the funniest people I've ever and, – and, and I knew then that one day he was going to be – he was so attention – he was so attention de- – uh, de- had such great attention to detail and a great dude. I mean, he didn't – he didn't play. He didn't get to play a whole lot, but when he was in, he he gave his maximum effort and uh, just a great all around dude. But just talk to us a little bit about what that and, and Bilal Powell is like on one of the was or he's, still he's is. Coaching, I don't, he's coaching his son in middle school. I so the middle school, y'all have got so many levels there. That's what's really cool about it. You've got mm-hmm. got room for all the former cards if they wanted to. Any former mm-hmm. cardinal that wants to coach, go to Christian Academy. Right. Have about fifty eleven slots on each age. Uh, mm-hmm. age team, but tell tell me a little bit about what what that was like going to a place that that embraced the Louisville, I mean the Louisville Cardinal athlete first and foremost, mm-hmm. and it kind of really, uh, you know, your, your pro career winded down. You were ready mm-hmm. to coach, and they welcomed you with open arms. Yeah, man. So I I, I want to give uh Cantwell his flowers, man, dude. Um, Cantwell doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Um, he still doesn't get the credit he deserves. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to give him his flowers. That man right there has, outside of uh, LaFleur's, Ca- uh, Cantwell has put Christian Academy on the map as one of the best ball clubs in the state of Kentucky. And I'm saying, like, top echelon as far as, like, playing 6 eight teams. Yeah. Um, playing, you know, the Bowling Greens, the Owen Burroughs in 5 A. Um, and we showcased that this past year of playing one of had one right? I want to say we had the hardest schedule in Cal history. Our first five games were all five A, six A teams. Um and we kind of we, we came ready to play and those teams went deep in the playoffs, which kind of make our RPI go up really, yeah. really high. So um definitely want to give him his flowers for him bringing me on staff in twenty twenty one. Um you know, we got we got to the third round of playoffs in 2021 and lost to Paducah Tim and his alma mater. And he, he said, I would never lose to them ever again. <laughs> and came back 2022. And we honestly could have been back-to-back-to-back state championships if he would have beat Paducah Tillman. Um, in 2021, we were up 14-6 and six at a half. And yep. excuse my language, shit hit the fan. <laughs> um, so you got to yeah. warm me. You got to warm me, Keith. Yeah. Hit the fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, stuff hit the fan, and we honestly probably would have won it three times in a row. So I think, um, again, he needs his flowers, but it's 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 always fun, and it's that coach staff is amazing. Of course, it's a brotherhood, right? All Louisville Cardinals. All Louisville Cardinals. We all know what the locker room feels like. Uh, we all, you know, know what how to grind, how to prepare, and, you know, just giving the kids that advice. We talk about it all the time is man those kids don't know how how blessed and how um how good it is to have seven guys who played football at the highest level or at some point tried to get to the highest level man so we try to just give them that feedback we don't get paid i want to put that out there we don't get no money to, to coach a cow we don't make six figures um we literally just do it because we love the game and we and we love you know the brotherhood that it that it comes with as far as being a coach and, and coaching young guys so well and i want to say this about hunter he was a guy that was uh, he was underrated here at louisville but brian brown went out in the miami game and he mm-hmm. come in and he dominated them and he put everything for for, for the remaining games brown was out he just put on a master's class every week mm-hmm. and he ended up you know, he ended up getting drafted by the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. And uh, or I don't know if he got drafted. I think he got drafted. By, I think he, he got drafted. I think he yeah. did. He definitely got signed by him, Hunter Cantwell. Yeah. Um, and just a guy who I've always admired because anybody that can step into the shoes of another. And just think about that. He took over for other former QB legends, mm-hmm. Stephon LaFours. Uh, and then you got, you got Cantwell. You got Redmond. It's just the who's who of Louisville quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, there. What position do you coach, or do you kind of coach just about? It? So I coach everything. That's <laughs> what I was gonna say. You just coach a little bit of everybody. Yeah, but I my main position, of course, was tight ends and receivers, and then um, I was a co-offensive coordinator with Kentwell, so I helped him call okay. plays. Um, most of the time, we have game plan, scripted stuff like that. So I helped him call plays this year. Well, I have been helping him call plays. But my main position that I coach, if you. Came to a practice and ran individual drills. I got the tight ends, and if okay. Doug can't make it, I got the receivers and tight ends. Or if 
Jason Hill, you can't make it. And I got the offensive line ain't tight in. So I kind of like do a, do a little bit of both. So, so uh, Paul Thomas says, what's up, crew? What's going on, Paul? So just kind of like a, a, a mix of what, what a jack of all trades, if you will. Yes. Yes. As I uh, call it. Yes. For <laughs> sure. For sure. Yeah. And uh want to give a shout out to my guy, my quarterback, you know, you insert the Terrell Owens, the sunglasses, the teardrop. Shout out to my guy, Chris Redman. Uh, got some stuff going on with, uh, in his personal life. Mm -hmm. with his family sending out i mean i don't know if he wants all that out there so i'll leave it at that but mm -hmm. definitely saying prayers for him and his family um mm -hmm. chris has been my, one of my best friends for 20 something i don't like to age myself on here but ever since we was at uofl anytime i've needed him he's been there no matter how long we've went in between phone calls or texts because it's called spade a spade. As I got a little bit older, from 30 to 40 has been a little bit rough because we had sick parents and we had, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've had health issues. Uh, here we, I'm, I bounce back though. That's what mm -hmm. we cardinal for I'm life do. We, we bounce back big time. I mean, not back to back big time yet, but I'm, I'm hoping to put another year together that was as good as this last one since I've been uh, rehabbing. But yeah, it, it really is a family. It's a brotherhood, and this is the reason why a lot of you, a lot of people out there that are like. Oh, I don't want to put my kids into sports. It's too competitive. It's too, it can shape and mold you. And it may not affect you right then when you're, there was a lot of stuff that my coaches taught me when I was a kid mm -hmm. that didn't really hit me till I got, got a little bit later in life and uh, got a little bit older. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is what they were talking about. Like I, I remember them telling me about stuff like this. Okay. So it's, and it helps you come out. Honestly, you can ask my brother. I didn't hardly talk at all to anybody in high school. I was very shy going to L, breaking that shell, hanging around people like Chris Pointer and mm -hmm. Ivan Green, the Mel Bulldogs, <laughs> uh, yep. Chris Redman, all of them, Danny Mosby, shout out to them. You know, they did Good make me an honor. Yeah, they did make me an honorary Mel Bulldog at the very first episode of the year when we had them all on to celebrate Ivan's ring of honor. Uh, mm -hmm. they, uh, ceremony. Ceremony, thank you. Induction. Induction. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah. They did make me a male bulldog for the rest of that show, so I appreciate that a little bit. It's over though, right? I'm not. A, I'm glad you're male. Uh, well, <laughs> obviously I'm a male, but they let me be a male bulldog for that show. And uh, Chris was very. I haven't said I could stay, but as soon as we were wrapping the show, Chris told me it was over with. So I appreciate that, Chris, for <laughs> letting me at least be there for a little bit. Uh, our guy Robert Holt. So. Does the Cal coaching staff have more pro experience than any other high school in Kentucky? Yes, yes, and yes. Show me another one uh, that has one, two. We got 50, 11 coaches there at Cal. It, it really is. And, and a lot of people will say, oh, I'm obviously a Dawson Dragon for life. That's who I mm -hmm. want to succeed. That's my alma mater. It is what it is. But Cal has become, and not just because they've won back-to-back -back state championships, since since Chris got there, since you've got there, our guy Ka uh, Hobo was even on staff. Yep. Is he still there? Colin's, yep. No, Colin. Colin's not. He's he's going on. I think baby number two, so he couldn't. He okay, couldn't, okay. Couldn't I, I thought this year. I thought that he was not, but I knew he was. So just a a a welcoming place for former Cardinals and, and Christian Academies. Is, is that first year when all y'all were on the team mm -hmm. together? I was like, all right, this is going to be my secondary team. And mm -hmm. it's only it's because I called you B2BK, but if it wasn't for me supporting the team, y'all probably would not have won anything. So uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's me being humble, not yeah, humble. Where's our ring at? Yeah, where's my where's my <laughs> state championship ring at, Keith? Power. It's it's downstairs in my basement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, thanks for keeping it safe for us. Very very politically <laughs> correct answer. I appreciate that. Um. Listen, shout out to everybody joining into the show tonight. Record viewership. And we knew we were going to have big numbers because we had my man Keith Tobridge on here. We had, well, we had a family reunion, an, an unintentional family reunion. Unbeknownst to you. Unbeknownst to me. Uh, and that's what I'm going to name this episode when I publish it here in a little bit. Unintentional family reunion featuring everybody that was on here. Uh, we appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Hop to hop to what I do the uh, the rapid fire real quick and we don't have a whole lot on rapid fire before we wrap up but it was announced this morning that U of L volleyball uh, setter Anna De Beer is returning for her senior the year back. she is mm -hmm. the the back okay I like that um, 
I think the reason why it's a key year for her to come back is because the final four is in Louisville oh, this yeah. year. Yeah. And those girls normally make it to the final four every other year. So yeah, what a what a special way for them to end the season. They could literally Maddie. never that's the one thing about women's volleyball. They could never leave the Yum Center in the NCAA tournament next year. Yeah. They'll host the first two rounds. They'll, they'll get the, the third and fourth if they're the highest seed left, which if it's high enough, they should get that. They may ne never have to leave the city of Louisville. What a great uh, home court advantage there for them. Uh, speaking of home court advantage, women's basketball beat undefeated Washington uh, the other night, 59 to 51. Uh, took, they absolutely took the Huskies back to the backyard, put them down, gave them a nice clean old yellow treatment. Dusted them off by eight. Colorado and sent them out in the wild. I can't hear you. They they took the Huskies and sent them to Colorado and let them out in the wild. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and this is our. By the way, this is our pun guy. If you didn't know that, Keith. I'm talking about. I don't know if Jeremy does or not. I I, I do, and I'm going. I'm choosing to go to the next thing. Congratulations to Damian Barker, uh, Josh Jones, and Gage Guerra for being selected in the 2024 MLS draft. Yeah. Again, Higgy wrote this, so it says Damian Barker, comma John. I think it's John Barker. D Damian Barker, John is his name. Higgy messed it up. I never proofread it because I think it's funnier to read his mistakes out out loud, <laughs> and I get dependent on him. So it is what it is. Our girl, I don't know why he separated this. This should have been under women's basketball. Olivia Cochran, uh, which was on our episode of the Louisville uh, Five Hundred Two Circle Louisville live stream, brought to you by the Ravon Sports app, along with Miss Nyla Harris. Join the 1,000-point uh, club with the victory over the in-state team that wears blue. That's all I'll say about those. Well, at least we beat them. <sighs> yeah. Hey, make sure while you're at uh, supporting CardinalSportsZone.com, you get out and support our photographers as well. They have the photo galleries at the top of CardinalSportsZone.com. Just hit galleries. Jeff, TJ, JK. Uh, they're the best in the city, and that's without a shadow of a doubt. They're 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 really good. Uh, sending prayers out to Jeff. His dad's really sick, and uh, it's touch and go right now. So we're wishing nothing but the best for you, buddy. Hopefully everything goes well uh, there. Shout out to all of our fine sponsors too. Fitness Market, Four Pegs. As I'm trying to navigate real quick, sponsor inquiry. Throw that over my face because who wants to see my face anyway? And the Collision Course Crew Tailgaters. We're working on more. Uh, for this next season, if you want to sponsor us, right underneath me, that's how you can sponsor us. Shoot me an email. We'll get you taken care of on social media. If you want to follow us, underneath Joey is where you can find where you can follow us on all social medias. Uh, it's really, really easy. We're on YouTube now. If you're watching us, we prefer you watch us on YouTube because let's just call it the way it is. They give a higher percentage of revenue. It's not much. So I, when I say a higher percentage, it's like, five cents per uh as opposed to three cents but still we get a little bit more of a a, a bump uh, from youtube than we do anywhere else it's real easy to create a youtube just go to youtube.com sign up even even uh even higgy could do it it's so easy shout out to our guy higgy we love you man i know it doesn't seem like it sometimes but who else would we joke on if it glad wasn't Higgy? The, glad the tornado didn't get him a couple Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. He was in Nashville when that tornado hit, and I think he may have – it went to hit him, and it may have bounced off and went the opposite direction. He was kind of like a wall cloud. He was a wall – he is a wall cloud. Kevin Williams in here joining us at the end. Nick Cobb, David, Brady, Gary, and, and Ryan hot back in. He's watching again. I love having Ryan on the show. He's yeah. – so much knowledge and it's just like i said earlier it's nice to have in uh b2bk come back uh, i can say this about him as well it's just nice to have somebody that's got knowledge and can formulate a sentence without saying um and like and you know and uh i, I sit and talk to ryan for like an hour at the tailgate one day like we talked yeah he comes to every football, tailgate it's Louisville football next year this year last year where you guys tailgate at uh, the Collision Course crew. It's over. Uh, you know where the Cardinal Hall of Fame Cafe used to be? Yeah. Yeah, it's now at El Nepal and a Dollar General store. No, it's not yep. a Dollar General store. Uh, it's it's behind there. So I it's in their parking more. lot. It's right. Behind, yeah, you got to come out. More than welcome. Come on out. Enjoy it. Great food, great drinks, great time. And uh, mm -hmm. we're normally doing the show live from there. So you're more than welcome to be a co-host anytime you hop in. I just 2745 Crittenden Drive is the address. And uh, 
look, we know you're busy during high school. But that's the only thing that really sucks for you is because you, you you got a lot of lot on your plate during that time. So I don't know mm-hmm. if you're able to get out to the games or the tailgate and stuff. Yeah, I've um I actually been to we get free tickets as high as high school coaches. Okay, but I also get alumni tickets too. So I, I heck, as long as I'm able to go, I'm I'm going. I don't got nothing to do on a Saturday afternoon, man. I started doing anyway, so. I ain't seen none of those tickets. Let, look, let's go. <laughs> Listen, here's what I'm going to say about that. <laughs> For the sixth straight year, I have not got an email about the alumni. Are you serious? Uh, I'm serious. They and really I, and it always crazy. slips. I always find out while I'm at the tailgate, and one of my friends is like, and this is a guy that never got a minute. He never played one second. He was barely even on the team. He's like, hey, man, where you at? Well, I'm over here doing the podcast live from the Collision Course Crew Tailgate. Where are you at? Oh, I'm at the alumni dinner over at Traeger. Like, tag on it. Remind me next Listen, year. Let you me need know. To, you need I, – I can get you in touch with Denise. Denise, they can put you on a list of stuff like that. That's 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 great. Yeah. You hear that, Denise? I mean, <laughs> yeah, y'all hear be. that? Keith's going to get me right. That's why B2BK is my favorite guest of all time now. I, I moved him all the way that. up on the list for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason Baker says, great show, but what about KP? Uh, back to my my closing of the show. You can yeah. find us on all the podcast avenues, Apple, I iTunes, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google, Amazon, and iHeart. Hit subscribe, like, follow, stalk, heart, whatever it is. Oh, he was talking about Kenny Powers, eastbound and down. I can't he's hear got a, He was talking about Kenny Powers, eastbound and down. He's got a cool mullet. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it after after we close, close up a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Not tonight. Let's let it go for a night. Any way you can, hit that button and uh, subscribe. It'll go straight to your phone. Uh, and speaking of subscribing, subscribe to us on YouTube. We I have been doing two or three shows during the week just to kind of shoot the crap and, and, and get you all to talk about. And they've been wildly successful. We'll continue to do those. We're, we're, like I said, we're going to have one pre-tape show that's going to air within the next 10 days. We're going to take the – we're going to – the first – uh first sunday of the year we're gonna go we're gonna go live sunday at 2 p.m uh, we're switching from football to basketball so we will do the sunday 2 p.m slot uh unless there's a basketball game that day and we'll figure something out but we'll, those will be more week to week type things but we'll come to you live that uh that very i want to say let me this is live tv pal we're gonna go ahead and do this right so I'm, I'm thinking Sunday the 7th will be our first uh, Sunday live show of the new year. So we're going to take some time off and enjoy ourselves. And, you know, we work hard. But I'll be coming to you live probably four or five times between now and then during the week. Just say hi in case anything happens basketball employment-wise, uh, anything newsworthy. If we uh, we win a game in the basketball, we'll, we'll do something. Uh, but, yeah, hit that like button on social media. Make it Facebook official. Tell everybody. Uh, but – you will get it on Facebook. If you subscribe to us on YouTube or Facebook, you'll get a notification. Even if I decide to get up and go to the bathroom at 1 o'clock in the morning and then come back to bed, can't go to sleep, sit in my chair and want to go live, you'll get a notification. I shouldn't have went that into detail, but it is what it is. I like to have fun, and y'all know that. But if you haven't listened to any of the – or all of the episodes that you've listened to some, if you've not listened to all the former episodes – other Cardinal Sports Zone podcast. It's really easy. Go back to cardinalsportszone.com. It's the place that I'll begin. Go to the podcast tab, drop down menu. You can listen to it's got three. And again, something I'm going to clean up over the break. It's got three choices. One of them's inactive. It says CSZ on 939 Deville. Uh they they actually uh we were on there for like four and a half years, and instead of leaving our our stuff up in their cloud. They just deleted it a couple of months ago, and we don't have access to any of that stuff anymore. But what we do have is what we were doing before 93.9. It says uh, live with 55, and there that that is all of our stuff prior uh, from what me and Steve and Justin did. Shout out to Steve Rum is Justin Rank. When we did our podcast prior to going to 93.9 and some stuff after 93.9 is on there. But the one we want you to listen to, said all that to say this, uh, CSZ Podcast, all 197 episodes are right there for you. We've got episode 200 coming around the first of the year. Can't wait to let y'all know who's going to be our special guest for 200, mostly because I don't know who it is yet, but it's definitely one of three people, and uh, they're all three going to make you happy uh, for sure, for sure. Shout out to everybody out there that is sharing the podcast. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. If 
you're on YouTube, hit the like button. That helps us out too. I'm not really sure how, but that's what they say in all the videos of all the, you know, if I had to watch a thousand videos with my nieces and people, hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, that's what you want to do. That helps us out. I don't know how. And shout out to our guys, Marcus Maven and Steve Rummage, doing the Lord's work Monday through Friday from 10 to noon on ESPN 93.9 The Ville. If you missed it today, Steve spoke to God on the air and let out probably one of his best rants of all time. Uh, you can find that. It, it's pretty good. You can find that on. We've got, I, I know that our guy Ty Spalding, if you go to his Twitter, you can find parts of it there. But shout out to Jeff Litzy. He, uh, he's on Twitter as well, and he's got the entire thing as one file. You can listen to it there. And Steve said everything that 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 we wanted to say as basketball fans the whole this whole last he, he kind of made me feel like I got a lot off my chest as well. So uh, John Lindeman says we should have the dating game for Sean on episode 200. Look, Sean can't even get a date from a calendar. I'm not sure us having a dating game live on TV. Uh, yes, Jason Baker. Well, the, guess what the rant was about? We know, bro. We know. We know. Um, Keith, where can people find you? I know it's very, very simple, but I like to let the guests tell us. Where can people find you on social media? <laughs> you can just search in Keith Toe Bridge. It's my at name, just Keith Toe Bridge. That's probably going to pop up Coach Keith. Um, and then my Instagram is Uncle Keith with two E's um, at the end with the underscore. So there you go. There you go. John Lemon says it would be a great watch. It would be a great watch to see see Sean try to talk to females uh, as, as uh, dominant as Coach Brown has been on the football field. Sean has been the opposite. Dating watch. Shout out to John, though. He's under the weather. Normally, he'd be here with us tonight. He's not feeling well. He's under the weather every month. It's every other week, dude. I don't understand how that family stays so sick. It's it's crazy. Shout out to Shauna Coffee in the building. Lisa, uh, Shannon Rectowall Hughes, name from the past. Appreciate that. Antron Mazden says Steve was preaching today. All facts. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, I'm speaking for me. I'm not going to speak for anybody else. I thought KP was a home run hire. I thought that everything that we were promised he was going to bring with him, heck, he thought everything he was promised was going to come into fruition. It didn't. We had a tough year last year. It's not getting any better this year. Um, we'll have to see what goes on at the end of the season. We'll, we'll see if he gets retained or not. But the fact of the matter is, Jason or John, not Jason, John, I just I can't with you anymore. He said he, he feels like Sean was having a heavy flow day today. And that's why we don't read half your comments yeah, on the air, John. John just direct messaged me and said, are you doing okay? No insult. Uh, you look rough. Well, you're short. Yeah, you're you're like 5'3", bro. Calm down. Like us tall people, us talls unite against you shorts, uh, especially short dudes. <laughs> and it's so funny because he's really not all that short. He, well, he is to us. Like we're six, but, six and a half, six, seven. He's, he's Keith, like you're, you're pretty tall, aren't you? Yeah, I'm 6'5". Yeah, right. tall people unite. Good yeah, good luck seeing our nose hair, John. That's for sure. Uh, just kidding. All right, stay tuned to our social media and subscribe to us on YouTube or Facebook to be alerted anytime we go live, even though we prefer YouTube. Thanks to everybody for joining us, Coach Fitz, Ryan, and the incomparable B2BK, a.k.a. Keith Dobridge, thank you for joining us, man. This has been a long time coming. We've been trying to get this together for a while. Yes, sir. Uh, are you still – really quick, I want to ask you, are you still, like, dabbling and doing your podcast? Yeah, so I'm, I'm dipping and dabbing. So me and my wife um, just honestly just talked about this. So we're going to do it in seasons now. So okay. um, first episode of 2024 should be coming out uh, first or second week of January. Um, I got it. I'm going to make it a coach series. I got a bunch of guys who are coaching college football and coaching high school football right now in different areas of the United States. Um, so we're probably going to need to do two podcasts a month. Um, and it's at through the headset podcast. Okay. Um, and it's just talking about everything, anything and everything. Um, I kind of, I kind of got similar to something to you towards the end of the podcast where it's, we're just doing two minutes. To where I go through a two minute warning and I kind of just go through the updates and things that need to be talked about or want to be talked about throughout that thing. But um, next step will be a coaching series on Through the Headset podcast. Awesome. And make sure you all subscribe to Keith on Twitter. It's at Keith. I know a lot of people, they're looking. Uh, what is, what is, does it, what's the YouTube channel's handle? Yeah. So it's at Through the Headset podcast. All of it is the same Instagram, okay. Twitter, 
um, YouTube, all of it. At Apple Podcasts, Spotify, it's all through the headset podcast. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Jason Baker says, Keith, congratulations on all the success and making a difference in young men's lives. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Shauna says, shout out to Big from Dale to Joey. Yeah. Corey says, love the show, guys. Look, we love bringing the show to you because, look, I've been blessed. One thing I have said, and I've said this a million times, I've been so blessed to meet so many great people. I grew up with a lot of important people. I put myself in situations with great people. I mean, just my my college career, uh, like I was able to to be around probably eight or nine of the, I mean, Roman Oban, Sam Madison, Rico Clark. Ray Buchanan, Chris Redman. I, I mean, I'm not trying to pat my own back, but a lot of the best players in Louisville history to that point, uh, and even to this day, were on that team. And then the basketball, Dewan Wheat, Alvin Sims, my guys, uh, Samaki Walker, the late Cliff Rozier. Uh, and then that built on to when, you know, we are, are we call him our little brother, Terrence Farley. He uh, He's coaching at uh, Portland, Christian. Portland Christian now. Shout out to him. He, this is his second year, I believe. And uh, I, he talked me into I, – I got very, very down when my college career ended because of injury. Um, felt like I had more I could I could do. And, and, you know, college is a time for exploring who you are and, and having experiences and stuff. And, I, you know, I didn't finish my college career out. So he talked me into going back to school. And then I – so then I enroll, and I'm in school in 05, finishing up my degree, and I'm there with Derek Character, Earl Clark, Peyton Siva, Jerry Smith, or those are people I met, and those guys weren't on the team. Larry O'Bannon, Brandon Jenkins, Ahaji Muhammad, all guys I met. An Uber driver. Uh, yeah, I don't talk about Dre. Uh, T. Will, I don't really talk about him much either. But anyway, just blessed enough to, that I've been able to meet a bunch of people that you all care about and then be able to bring those people to you. And even with me, the, the, to, to tie that into the last 12 years of doing Cardinal Sport Zone just by covering U of L and the people I've got to meet and talk to. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember this, Keith, but I did interview you on media day one year. Do, do you remember that? I probably don't. No, no. You're I'm supposed to say sure yeah. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm pretty sure you probably got the clip. If you do, I'm probably more, my memory's bad. I think man got too many freaking hits to the head, bro. I'm, Listen, I'm I did, really so like that's it. what, look, look, look I, I gotta, get, <laughs> I gotta get, get oh, you hip yeah, to the game. Yeah, yeah. All you gotta do is say, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember okay, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It, was, it was really, really good. good. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, and we do have the clip. It's on YouTube. So go to the old Cardinal Sports Zone channel, check it out. It, uh, we had a good time. I'm, not, I'm actually about to go look. I'm pretty sure I probably do remember it. That's crazy. Listen, this is live TV, so I'm probably lying a little bit, but I want them to think that that everything. Yeah, just go to the old YouTube channel. It's there. Uh, it might not be there, but it is what it is. We <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, last words, Keith. I'll let you go first. What what you got to say to Card Nation? Uh, not only about the bowl game, but just in general. Pitch anything that you're involved in that you want to l- let them know about too. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, um, fans, man, this is a wonderful time to be a Cardinal. Uh, we got ebbs and flows with different sports, and it just kind of just continue to keep having some sort of patience. Uh, we are, uh, I'm ingrained into this city now. We are a city of grit. We are a city of, this is a blue collar city who loves Louisville Cardinals, and we kind of just, kind of just got to go through a rough patch that we're having with the basketball program, but then also making sure that we're there for the football program and also the other um, sports you know, uh, programs that we have that are doing very successful, man. So continue to keep, you know, rooting for all of us, rooting for all the athletes, because at the end of the day, it's about the athletes. It's not about us anymore. It's about the athletes. How can we, you know, get them, you know, to play well, to play a little bit harder, um, et cetera. But outside of that, man, uh, it's a wonderful holiday season. No snow on the ground, which is a plus. Yeah. Um, So, you know, that's a good thing that we can celebrate. Um, hopefully, I don't. I didn't. I didn't speak too soon, but no, I knocked on wood for you. I knocked on wood for you. <laughs> okay, cool, good. But uh, uh, everybody, just have a wonderful holiday season. Please stay safe and don't drink and drive. Absolutely. Look, it's already catching on. Corey Massey's shouting out B two B K on <laughs> Twitter. You change your uh, your Twitter handle to B two. It should be B. Uh, I'm going to change it just for that. There you go. Ricky B says, "What's up, everybody?" And our guy Jay <laughs> Bell. Can men's basketball shock the world and Louisville? Um, well, here's what would shock me is a couple of wins in a row would shock me. Look, you all know I've been the Everybody's biggest. Everybody's a comedian. My last, I'll go, I'll, no, you go first, then I'll get my last well, word. Get ready to hit the, uh, 
the sensor button. Okay. 2023 can kiss my. <laughs> it's been pretty. So uh, let's <laughs> let's get on to 2024 and uh, start fresh. And Maryland sucks. I made the mistake last year on January the first. If if face my post Facebook post said what was this year. Well, yeah, on January the 1st of this year, because we lost our dad July the 1st of last year. And my first post on Facebook in January the 1st was, Can't get any worse. Man, good and riddance to 2022. It can't get any worse. And then I was in and out of the hospital for four months due to aneurysms in my abdomen that I didn't know I had. I almost died 50, 11 times. Uh, I was away from home for eight months. Mom was away from home. She was really sick. She, we were actually in the same hospital. Joe, you know that. But we were actually next door roommates for a couple that, of weeks. I made that move for you. You made that happen. I appreciate that because I was able to see mom uh, a little bit more. Uh, shout out to Andre joining us in real, real late. Uh, John Lineman says you survived. So that's a blessing. That's a blessing for you, John. You know, John's getting some points back. You know what? He's been a pain in my butt the whole show, but he's getting some points back. Uh, yeah, I survived. It is a blessing. And that's why I'm so, I feel so fortunate. And I keep doing these because. I was I was blessed with a, a an ability to entertain. I've always been the entertainer at family functions. I've always been the entertain, entertainer with friends. I always been, and, and Louisville did that to me. I, I was very very shy in high school. It wasn't until probably my senior year of high school, freshman year in college, that I really started to believe in myself uh, and and come out of my shell and have some confidence and you know just be jeremy that's when i turned louisville football turned me into the jeremy that i am today as far as my uh personality my thanks, wit ron cooper yeah thanks ron look people are always harsh on ron he had one season where we went one in ten my sophomore year and they fired ron cooper Tracy's home. okay well she can be home I mean, I love you, wife. She's about to come in. I can't say I didn't shout her out now. She's stretching. Um, but yeah, just been blessed. And and I bring, uh, the point being, I bring everybody that I've been blessed enough to meet to you all because you all enjoy it. And this is something that I love. And I hope to make a living out of it one day more so. I've got a little bit more time to focus now on doing stuff like this. So you'll definitely be getting more podcasts from us. And Keith, anytime you want to hop on, we appreciate yes, it. Uh, appreciate you both. Look, we appreciate it. There's that. There's the Look outro music. Fire outro. There's the the outro again. We're gonna have one pre-taped show. The award shows will come out. I'll get you more information at Jeremy underscore CSZ on Twitter. Jeremy Woman on Facebook. We'll get the information to you. It'll come out here. We're gonna do our year end of the year award show. We're gonna have a lot of fun categories. It's gonna be a good time. Thanks again uh, for key uh, for B two B two B K. For Joe Wallman for 55. Thanks again. Until next time, this has been the Cardinal Sports Zone Podcast. Now I got to hit the, the outro video, right? Okay. <laughs> All hey, right, fellas. Good talking to y'all, man. All right. Let's go.